I welcome to the algebraic and complex geometry session of ICM 2022. I'm Melissa Liu, and it's my great honor to be the chair of this talk by Professor Mina Aknagic. Hi, Hi, Melissa. Hi, Professor Mina Aknagic is a full professor of mathematics and physics at the University of California, Berkeley in the United States. Um, she has made major contributions in topological string theory, mirror symmetry, gauge theory, um, mirrors and low dimensional topology. The title of her to talk today is homological not invariance from mirror symmetry. Please. Thank you, Melissa, for the introduction. It's a, a great honor to be here. Um, I will uh, tell you about two preprints that appeared and uh, also joint works that are about to appear with Miroslav Rapchak, Elisa Lepage, uh, also Ivan Danielenko, um, Yishin uh, Li, and Peng Zhao. So in this talk, I'll describe an application of homological mirror symmetry um, to solving an old problem from a different branch of mathematics. The problem was introduced in 98 by Klano, who showed how to associate to link a bigraded homology theory whose uh, equivariant oil characteristic is the Jones polynomial. Klano's homology groups are themselves link invariants. They're independent of the link projection he used to define them. Kavanov's construction is part of the categorification program by um, uh, Crane and Frankel. A simple toy model of categorification comes from a Riemannian manifold M whose Euler characteristic is categorified by the cohomology groups of the Durand complex. From physics perspective, the Euler characteristic is the partition function of supersymmetric quantum mechanics with our manifold M as a target space. The collection of vector spaces uh, may be provided by most theory approach to supersymmetric quantum mechanics as perturbative supersymmetric ground states indexed by the Fermi number. The action of the differential uh, is generated by solutions to flow equations that uh, physicists call instant ones. The Jones polynomial is a special case of a quantum group link invariant where uh, one takes the Lie algebra to be SU2 with a link component colored by its fundamental representations. Uh, in 2013, uh, Ben Webster showed that there's a, a abstract algebraic framework for categorification of quantum group uh, invariants for an arbitrary simple Lie algebra uh, based on what are called KLRW algebras, uh, generalizing algebras of Kovano, of Lauda, and of Roquier. While um, Kovano's categorification of the Jones polynomial is explicit and easily calculable, Webster's theory uh, is not. Despite the successes of the program, uh, one is missing a fundamental principle that explains why is categorification possible. This construction um, has really no right to exist. Unlike in our uh, toy example of categorification of the Euler characteristic, uh, Kovanov's construction and its generalizations do not come from either geometry or physics in any unified way. The problem Kovanov initiated is to find a general framework for construction of link homology groups that works uniformly for all Lie algebras which explains what link homology groups are and why they exist. The solution to the problem uh, comes from a new relation between homological mirror symmetry and representation theory. Homological mirror symmetry naturally gives rise to hosts of homological invariants. Most of the time, however, it gives uh, rise to invariants that are of no particular interest outside of the problem at hand. For example, if you study the quintic. We'll discover here a vast new family of mirror pairs of manifolds where homological mirror symmetry does lead to interesting new invariants, and in particular, it solves this knot categorification problem. Most works on knot invariants start with quantum groups. To understand um, how knot invariants arise from geometry and what categorifies them, it will be crucial for us to recall how quantum groups came into the story. In 88, uh, Witten showed that the Jones polynomial comes from Chen Simon's theory um, with gauge group based on Lie algebra SU2. This placed the Jones polynomial in a more general framework, which you get by considering Chen Simon's theory based on different Lie algebras and varying representations. Chen Simon's theory associates the Riemann surface with punctures um, colored by representations of the Lie algebra, a vector space, uh, it's Hilbert space. Witten showed that Hilbert space of Transformers theory is spanned by vectors that have a name. They're known as conformal blocks of the affine Lie algebra associated to G. For us, 
It will suffice to know that every conformal block of the affine Lie algebra, and hence every state in a Hilbert space, can be produced explicitly as a solution to a very famous linear differential equation. The equation uh, solved by conformal blocks uh, was uh, discovered by Knizhnik and Zemological in 84. The variables in the equation are positions of punctures on the Riemann surface. By varying positions of punctures in Simon's time, we uh, get a colored braid. We also get a monodromy problem, which is to describe the analytic continuation of the fundamental solution of the KZ equation along a path in the parameter space corresponding to the braid. This problem was solved by Drinfeld and by Cardin and Lustig, who showed that monodromy matrix is the product of R matrices of uh, the quantum group uh, corresponding to G, uh, which uh, act by exchanging neighboring pairs of punctures. Any link invariant can be expressed as a matrix element of the braiding matrix between uh, conformal blocks corresponding to uh, caps and uh, caps. Uh, such conformal blocks are obtained by bringing together pairs of punctures colored by complex conjugate representations and fusing them together to uh, identity. Thus, um, um, both braiding and fusion in conformal field theory play an important role in the story. To categorify quantum non invariants, one would like to associate to the space of conformal blocks, you get a fixed time slice, a bigraded category, which in addition to the usual cohomological grading has an additional grading associated to Q. To braids, uh, we'd like to associate functors between categories corresponding to the top and the bottom. To links, uh, we'd like to associate a vector space whose elements are morphisms between objects uh, of the categories at the top and the bottom up to the action of the braiding function. Moreover, we'd like to do all that in a way that recovers quantum non-invariance upon decategorification. One um, typically proceeds by coming up with a category, and then one has to prove that decategorification gives the quantum non-invariance you set out to categorify. The geometric solutions to the non-categorification problem that I'll describe uh, share virtue that um, the second step is automatic. Mirror symmetry um, relates pairs of Calabi manifolds, which are fibered by um, dual tor tori over a common base. So mirror symmetry exchanges uh, the mirror manifolds by exchanging problems in complex or B-type and symplectic or A-type geometry. Konsevich uh, conjectured in his uh, 94 ICM address that um, the way to understand mirror symmetry is as an equivalence of categories of brains. Um, brains are boundary conditions for two dimensional sigma models, 2x and y, one of which comes from complex, uh, the other from symplectic geometry. The category of brains coming from compl complex geometry is the derived category of coherent sheaves, um, whose objects um, we'll call B type brains. Um, they're supported in complex uh, submanifolds of X. The category of brains coming from symplectic geometry is uh, the derived Fukaya category, whose objects um, are sometimes called A brains. They are supported on real or Lagrangian submanifolds of Y. Konsevich's homological mirror symmetry is a conjecture that the category of B type brains on X and a category of A type brains on Y are equivalent. Knizhnik's homological equation, which um, plays a central role in knot theory, has a geometric counterpart. In the world of mirror symmetry, there is an equally fundamental differential equation, which is sometimes called the quantum differential equation. It was introduced by Givenfeld. The name quantum differential equation comes from um, symplectic or A-type geometry, where um, the connection um, on a vector bundle with fibers, um, even cohomology of X, over the complex fight Kähler moduli of X, uh, the connection is computed by, um, comes from quantum multiplication by divisors. The quantum product um, on the cohomology is a deformation of the classical cup product defined by gram witten theory. In the mirror, the connection is the classical gauss manning connection on the vector bundle over the moduli space of complex or B-type structures with fibers, the mid-dimensional uh, cohomology. Why? Solutions to the quantum differential equation live in a finite uh, dimensional vector space, which is spanned by K-theory classes of brains. 
Um, these are B-type brains on X um, and uh, A-type brains on Y. From perspective of X, uh, solutions are obtained by counting holomorphic maps of all degrees from a domain curve, which is best thought of as an infinite cigar with a circle boundary at infinity. We get a specific solution of the quantum differential equation by choosing a B-type brain as the boundary condition at infinity. The solution depends on the brain only through its K-theory class. Both the equation and its monodromy problem feature prominently starting with the very first papers on mirror symmetry. The Knishim zimological equation not only has the same flavor as the quantum differential equation, but under certain conditions, they coincide. On the knot theory side, we will want to take the Riemann surface to be a punctured infinite cylinder rather than a complex plane with punctures. This enriches the theory, allowing it to describe invariance of knots in R2 times S1 and not just in R3. We will also specialize, at least for the time being, um, the Lie algebra to be simply laced and throughout um, we'll restrict the representations uh, to be minuscule. On the geometric side, we'll want to take the target manifold to be a very special Calabial manifold, one uh, which is best described as the moduli space of G monopoles on R3 with prescribed singularities. The monopole group G is related to the transheimans gauge group uh, by Langlands or electric magnetic duality. In transheimans theory, we view knots in three dimensional space as paths of heavy particles electrically charged under LG. In the geometric description, uh, which we'll need for categorification, the same heavy particles appear as singular Dirac monopoles of the Langlands dual group. The, ma the magnetic description is what's needed, um, was anticipated in the works of Whitman. The manifold X played an important role in mathematics before. In the geometric Langlands correspondence, it's known as the resolution of the transversal slice uh, to a fine Grassmannian of G. The physicist, um, the same X is a Coulomb branch of a certain three dimensional gauge theory. The monopole moduli space is parameterized in part by positions of some number of smooth monopoles um, on R3, whereas positions of singular um, or Dirac type monopoles are fixed and they determine the metric on X. The split of R3 into R times C reflects a choice of complex structure on X in which positions of singular monopoles on R are the real Kähler moduli and their positions on C, the complex structure moduli. In terms of the tr transversal slice, uh, the vector nu encodes singular monopole charges uh, and order in which they appear on the real line. And nu is the total monopole charge, singular and smooth. The monopole moduli space has more symmetries than a typical Calabial because um, X is holomorphic symplectic. As a consequence, its quantum cohomology differs from classical only if we work equivariantly with respect to a torus action that scales its holomorphic symplectic form. <clears throat> we'll take that scaling to be with weight Q. Um, the symmetry uh, comes from rotations of the complex plane in R3. That's an isometry of X if we place all the singular direct type monopoles at the origin of this complex plane. The parameter Q um, uh, of knot theory will be related to working equivariantly with respect to the symmetry. If all the representations are minuscule, as we're assuming, and positions of singular monopoles and R are generic, um, our manifold X is smooth. The fact that trigonometric KZ equation, uh, um, which is relevant for the setting, has a geometric interpretation as the quantum differential equation of X is a recent theorem of Ivan Danilenko, who is a postdoc at Berkeley. It follows that uh, which solution of the KZ equation we get is determined by um, a choice of a B-type brain as the boundary condition of our cigar at infinity. The category of B-type brains, um, we're um, working equivariantly with respect to a torus T that includes scaling um, of the holomorphic symplectic form with weight Q, um, as uh, known as the derived category of T equivariant coherent sheaves. We'll use T only to keep track of gradings and morphisms uh, of objects and morphisms in our category. 
So um, we took the Riemann surface to be an infinite cylinder rather than the plane because the B fields that uh, pair with real KLM moduli to give the complex ones are periodic. It follows that um, a braid has a geometric interpretation as a path in complexified KLM moduli of X that avoids singularities. A central expectation in mirror symmetry is the fact that monodromy of the quantum differential equation is categorified by a functor, um, which uh, transports the category um, of B-type brains along the path uh, corresponding to the braid and which is an equivalence. In the settings relevant to us, um, the proof was given by Bezrukovnikov and Okunkov using um, quantization in characteristic P. Physically, um, the expectation comes as follows. Uh, braid group acts in the sigma model on the cigar by letting the modulo of the, of the theory vary near the boundary of cigar at infinity, where uh, the direction along the cigar co uh, coincides with time along the braid. It follows from this that um, the sigma model on an annulus with a moduli that vary according to the braid computes the matrix element of monodromy between a pair of brains. And for all this, we view time to run along the annulus. Sigma model on the very same Euclidean annulus, where instead we take the time to run around the S1, computes the supertrace, uh, which is the Euler characteristic of the supercharge preserved by a pair of brains. The cohomology of that supercharge is the very basic ingredient in the category of brains, the space of morphisms between the pair of brains. Um, in formulating this, we can take all the variation um, to happen near one or the other boundary. Um, so for any pair of brains, we get a collection of cohomology groups, uh, the, space of morph the spaces of morphisms between the brains, whose Euler char characteristic is the braiding matrix element. So we understood that coherent sheaves on X um, manifestly uh, categorify braiding matrix elements. To extend this to link invariance, we need to understand uh, which objects of the, of the derived category lead to um, conformal blocks in which um, pairs of punctures come together and disappear. For this, um, we'll need to understand the geometric interpretation of fusion in terms of category of, uh, of coherent sheets. In conformal field theory, uh, fusion diagonalizes braiding. The analog of this in the category of coherent sheaves turns out to be um, existence of a perverse filtration, um, the kind that was envisioned by Chong and Ropier in abstract terms as the right structure to describe the action of braiding on uh, derived categories. So one learns from this that cups and cups come from brains on X that have a simple geometric meaning. These brains are structure sheaf for vanishing cycles, um, which are um, uh, products of minuscule Grassmannians, um, one minuscule Grassmannian for each cap. These are cycles that shrink to points as punctures um, on the Riemann surface come together. So using very special properties of these perverse filtration and vanishing cycle brains, I prove that not only do homology groups manifestly categorify the corresponding quantum group link invariants, which you get for free from the theorem by Bezrukovnikov and Nukunkov, but moreover, they're themselves link invariants. And um, it's the virtue of perverse filtrations that such proofs are become elementary. Um, the approach by uh, coherent sheaves on X explains the origin of homological link invariants in geometry and physics in a manner that works uniformly um, for all um, 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 Lie algebras, simple Lie algebras. Um, recently, um, Ben Webster proved uh, that homological uh, invariants that come from B type brains on X are equivalent to algebraic invariants he defined in 2013 using um, a cylindrical version of the KLRW algebra. And moreover, they generalized them to links in R2 times S1. Bezrukovniko and Kaladin, using a quantization characteristic P, introduced a tilting vector bundle on X. Um, um, the category of modules um, of its endomorphism algebra is derived equivalent to the category of coherent sheaves. Webster's proof of the equivalence of 
uh, the approach to categorification by B-type brains on X and his own from 2013 is based on showing that the endomorphism algebra of the tilting vector bundle is um, a close cousin of the algebra he defined in 2013. The generalization amounts to studying links on R2 times S1. Now, as stated, neither the approach by coherent sheaves um, nor KLRW algebras um, are really, they both exist only abstractly. To solve the theory, we'll make use of homological mirror symmetry, or more precisely, an equivariant version of it. In the very best instances of homological mirror symmetry, one uh, learns how to make equi uh, the equivalence of the two categories manifest. Um, and then both theories based on X and Y become solvable exactly. A very simple example uh, of homological mirror symmetry um, um, of such kind is uh, to take X and Y to simply be a pair of infinite cylinders. Um, the categories of brains on the two sides um, each turn out to be generated by a single brain. Uh, while the brains look different, um, it's simply a structure sheaf of X uh, on, the, on the coherent sheaf side and a real line Lagrangian um, on, the, uh, on the mirror. So while these brains look different, their endomorphism algebras turn out to be the same and both are equal to the algebra of functions on a complex cylinder. The homological mirror symmetry that relates X and Y is uh, really a consequence of a pair of equivalences um, where um, D sub Y is, in this case, um, a derived category of the Rab Foucault category of Y. And uh, D sub A is the de derived category of modules of this algebra A, the endomorphism algebra of the generator. So the simple example is the model of how one hopes to understand homological mirror symmetry in all cases. Ordinary, uh, the ordinary non-equivariant mirror of Rx is a hyperkähler manifold Y, which is to a first approximation given by hyperkähler rotation of X. In fact, um, Y is also a modulized space of G monopoles, just an R2 times S1 and with a potential. Webster's uh, proof of the equivalence of categorification of quantum link invariants by beta brains on X and by KLRW algebra is really the first of the two equivalences and they make up homological mirror symmetry. We won't describe in this talk um, the, the, the mirror derived category of Y um, and how the KLRW algebra arises from it, um, but rather we'll make use of a further simplification that's available in the present setting. Recall that um, X is the moduli space of monopoles on R3, where um, the asymmetry that corresponds to rotations of C plays a key role. That's how we got Q into the problem. The simplification um, comes from the fact that working equivariantly with respect to the symmetry, all the relevant information about the geometry of Rx, the monopole moduli space, should be contained in a core locus that's preserved by such action. The core is a singular holomorphic Lagrangian, um, and the locus in the monopole moduli space where all monopoles, whether singular or not, are at the origin of C and at points in R. We'll define the equivariant mirror of our original X. Um, so we'll call the original X the big X. We'll call its core the small X. So, um, we'll, call, uh, we'll call the equivariant mirror of the big X, the ordinary mirror of its core, the ordinary mirror of, this, of, the, of the small X, which we'll call the small Y. They're small because they have the dimension. So while the small X um, embeds into the big X as a holomorphic Lagrangian, um, the big Y fibers over the small Y with holomorphic Lagrangian C star uh, fibers. A model example to keep in mind is the big X, which is the resolution of the A minus one uh, surface singularity. Such so big X is a moduli space of a single smooth SO3 monopole in presence of M singular ones. Um, for the big X, um, which is this resolution of the A minus one surface singularity, its core looks like a collection of M minus one P1s with a pair of infinite disks attached. 
the corresponding uh, cores are always a singular for multiple Lagrangians. Um, the ordinary mirror uh, of the big X is the big Y, which is a complex structure deformation, of what's called a multiplicative A minus um, one surface singularity with a potential that uh, unknown in all cases, but we won't need. So um, the multiplicative A minus one surface is a C star vibration over the small Y, which is an infinite cylinder with M marked points in the interior. And at the marked points, C star fibers of big Y over small degenerate. So the small Y is a single copy of the Riemann surface where conformal blocks live. Um, by SYZ mirror symmetry, the mirror pair in our toy example, uh, share in a model example, <laughs> share a common base, um, which is simply a real line with some marked points. More generally, the equivariant mirror Y, the small y, uh, is a configuration space of, um, of colored points that are colored by, by, by roots of the Lie algebra and otherwise indistinguishable, one for each smooth monopole, uh, on the Riemann surface where conformal blocks live, with some locus deleted and singularities uh, resolved. Including um, the equivariant action on the big X and the small x, or and the small x, corresponds to adding uh, to the sigma model on, 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 the, on our small y a specific potential, which is a multi-valued holomorphic function. From the mirror perspective, every conformal blocks of the affine Lie algebra, um, conformal blocks of the affine Lie algebra are partition functions of the B-twisted theory on an infinitely long cigar with eight type boundary conditions on infinity, corresponding to a choice of Lagrangian in uh, Y. Such amplitudes uh, have the following integral form, where omega is the topomorphic form on Y, and W is the lambda Gisbert potential, and phi is the sum um, chiral ring operators, insertions at the origin. In fact, the integrals you end up with are um, familiar. They're known as free field representations of conformal blocks of the affine Lie algebra, um, which go back to works of Fagin and Frankel in the 80s, and also Schechtman and Vartika. So if you like, mirror symmetry explains why such representation exists. Corresponding to a solution, um, to a solution of the KZ equation is an A brain and the boundary of this long cigar at infinity. So this brain is an object of the category of uh, A brains that the derive for chiocidal category of Y with potential W. One can uh, describe this category very explicitly thanks to the fact that Y is a, a close cousin of the configuration space of colored points on a puncture Riemann surface. Objects of the category of A-brains um, can all be described in terms of the Riemann surface as either products of one dimensional curves colored by simple roots or generalized, in, or generalized intervals, um, curves with boundaries uh, with um, collections of points running along. Um, in any category of A-brains, uh, spaces of morphisms between pairs of brains are defined by floor theory, which is modeled after most theory approach to supersymmetric quantum mechanics from the beginning of the talk. The role of the Morks complex is taken by the floor complex, um, which is a vector space spanned by the intersection points of Lagrangians and graded by homological and um, equivariant degrees. Uh, the equivariant gradings come from the fact that W is multivalued. The action of the differential on the space um, is generated by um, solutions to flow equations, instantons. So in floor theory, um, uh, uh, the coefficients, uh, the action of the differential is computed by counting holomorphic disk instantons in Y, interpolating from one intersection point to another of Maslow index one and equivariant degree zero. The cohomology of the resulting complex is the space of morphisms between the brains. A simplification in the present case is just as the brains have description in terms of the Riemann surface, so the, the intersection points and maps between them. The theory which results is a generalization uh, to arbitrary simply laced Lie algebra of Hegart floor theory. The latter is associated to uh, GL1 slash one and categorifies the Alexander polynomial. So Hegart floor theory is um, phrased in the same one dimensional terms and famously exactly solvable. 
as in Hegart Floyd theory, every holomorphic map from a disk and to Y projects with non-negative multiplicities to domains on the Riemann surface with boundaries and one-dimensional Lagrangians and vertices at intersection points. And um, as in Hegart Floyd theory, from these domains on the Riemann surface, you can read off the cohomological and equivariant degrees of all the maps um, to Y. Now, mirror symmetry helps us understand which questions we need to ask to recover homological uh, not invariance uh, from Y for any simply laced Lie algebra. Since Y is an ordinary mirror of the small Y is an ordinary mirror of the small X, we should start by understanding how to recover homological invariance from the small X instead of the big X. Um, every B-type brain on the big X, which is relevant for us, comes from a B-type brain on the core via a functor that simply interprets um, a coherent sheaf on the small X as a coherent sheaf on the big X. This functor has an adjoint um, that goes the other way. And adjointness means that for any uh, pair of brains on the big X that come from the small X, uh, the homes between them on the big X agree with the homes computed downstairs on the small x after replacing one of the brains by a brain that, is gone, that goes on a, on a trip. You send it up and then back down. Um, so equivariant homological, now equivariant homological mirror symmetry relating um, big x and small y isn't an equivalence of categories, but rather it's a correspondence of brains and associated vector spaces, which come uh, from a pair of adjoint functors. Um, inherited from, um, from mirror symmetry. So the mirror to the functors I had just described. Now, uh, recall our uh, running example of Y, which is uh, equivariant mirror to X on the A N surface. So mirror to uh, I vanishing P1 in the small X is a, uh, is a Lagrangian, which is simply an interval between a pair of functors. The functor that goes straight up <laughs> to the big Y amounts to pairing a brain downstairs with a torus fiber over it, which is how you get this picture. The functor uh, that goes the other way doesn't send the vanishing sphere in the big Y back to an uh, interval in a small Y. Instead, um, it sends it to a, a figure eight Lagrangian. That's an easy computation, um, um, which can be done in many different ways. So for any, in fact, for uh, the case that I described comes from um, SL2. For any simple Lie algebra, brains that uh, serve as um, caps and caps upstairs in the big X, which are uh, structure sheets of, of products of minuscule Grassmannians, or originate from vanishing cycle brains of the, of the downstairs theory on Y, which um, a generalized interval, so uh, one minuscule Grassmannian comes from this guy, and project back down as generalized figure eights. So in the description based on Y, both Lagrangians and the action of braiding on them is geometric. So we can simply start with the projection of a link to a surface. Uh, translate it, we can translate it to a pair of A brains by choosing a bicoloring of every link component by an equal number of segments of each color, such that red always underpasses the blue. The mirror Lagrangians are obtained by replacing all the red segments by interval type brains and all the blue segments by figure eight type brains. So for um, SU2, you get this kind of picture. The homological link invariant is a space of morphisms between the pair of brains graded by cohomological and Q gradings. To evaluate the Euler characteristic, one simply counts the intersection points of Lagrangians um, keeping track of um, gradings. The fact that for SU2, a uh, graded count of intersection points computes the Jones polynomial is a theorem by Bigelow from the 90s. As in Hegart floor theory, to compute the action of the differential, um, one, uh, computing the action of the differential can be translated to a sequence of well-defined by hard problems, but hard problems in complex analysis in one dimension using cylindrical approach to floor theory. Now, surprisingly, this problem can be solved. We'll solve all the discounting problems at once by making use uh, of homological mirror symmetry that uh, relates the downstairs mirror pair. Um, 
the fact that uh, mirror symmetry sums up curve counts is its basic property. So uh, one novel aspect of the downstairs series um, that's inherited from um, the pair of adjoint functors is that um, they're, they're derived categories of somewhat novel type. They are derived categories uh, with coefficients in local systems or perverse Schobert. Um, now, however, as in the simplest examples of homological mirror symmetry, the categories of brains on the two sides are both generated by a finite number of brains. The generating set of brains uh, from perspective of Y, are simply products of real line Lagrangians colored by simple roots and equipped with a certain local system. Um, the associated algebra of open strings is a smaller cousin of the upstairs KLRW algebra. So this is a simple generalization of very simplest examples of mirror symmetry. Um, the algebraic description of link homology based on the small algebra has a, a simple geometric mean. By the virtue of the equivalence of derived category of modules of um, the algebra A the, and the morphism algebra of the generating T brains, any brain uh, in Y and in particular these braided cap brains have a projective resolution as a complex, every term of which is a direct sum of T brains. The complex describes how to get a brain um, of uh, Yuan starting with a direct sum of T brains and taking connected sums. This deforms the differential away from the trivial one. The complex that describes the braided cap brains delivers um, homology, uh, link homology without any further work. Um, the fact that no further work is needed is uh, once you know the complex, it's thanks to the fact that vanishing uh, cycle brains um, um, that you need for that, uh, um, which include the caps are, um, and the real line Lagrangians, the T brains, form a causal dual set. They correspond to, respectively, the simple and projective modules of the algebra. A. So from the complex describing the braided cap brain, you get for free a complex of vector spaces um, uh, that are homes with the uh, with uh, with the with the with the brain, the cup brain, with an action of the differential that squares to zero. The complex of vector spaces you get uh, with the action of the differential is nothing but the floor complex. Mirror symmetry has summed up the instantons for us once you know the projective resolution of the braided, of the braided figure eight brain. Um, now, in general, finding such projective resolutions is uh, difficult, though solvable in principle. To find the resolution, you need, to you need to solve two difficult problems. The first is to compute which module of the algebra the brain maps to um, uh, by the Yoneda functor. And then um, you need to find a projective resolution of this module, which um, in general involves infinite bar resolutions. Now in our setting, both of these problems can be solved at once. Thanks to the fact that um, the braided cap brains, um, here they're not braided, um, are products of one dimensional uh, Lagrangians on the Riemann surface. Uh, for one dimensional Lagrangians, for one dimensional geometrical Lagrangians, um, all cone maps are geometric. And all of our Lagrangians um, that we need for these braided cap brains, they're all products of one dimensional ones. Consequently, almost all the maps in the complex can be deduced from the geometry of the brain. The basically iterating um, the one dimensional, <laughs> uh, the one dimensional cone construction of, of taking the brain, stretching it out uh, into T brains and recording how it breaks at the two infinities on the Riemann surface. <clears throat> um, the few remaining ones uh, are found by asking that the, that, that, um, that, the, that the differential is a nil potent operator in the algebra, it squares to zero. So for example, for the trefoil, uh, for the left-handed trefoil of, um, uh, for SU2, you'd get a follow, we need, um, we'd have uh, uh, a following pair of brains, the red brain and the blue brain. Um, for simplicity, we can ask 
about reduced covenant homology, where um, the unknot homology is said to be trivial. This slide sets erase a pair of Lagrangian um, and simplify a problem to a one-dimensional one. Um, the braided figure eight brain um, can be stretched out along the cylinders. So here, the axis of the cylinder actually runs vertically. So it can be stretched out into T brains um, while recording how it, how it breaks at the two infinities of the Riemann surface. Um, uh, every uh, uh, element here is a specific element um, of, the, of the algebra, um, specific known element of the algebra. Um, out of the complex that describes the brain, only a very small part um, contributes to a uh, link homology and uh, produ reproduces reduced common homology of the track wall. It's only a very small part because only the, t the brain uh, that's labeled by T2 has uh, any harms to the um, corresponding cut brain labeled by I2. So almost all the terms in this complex are relevant uh, for, for link homology. This, the theory that I just described um, uh, has a generalization to arbitrary simple uh, Lie algebras, as well as um, uh, certain Lie super, Lie super algebras, GLN slash M, for example. For, in all these cases, the link homology is a small known piece of the complex that, that uh, describes the braided cap brains. And um, I should say that even for hegar floyd theory, uh, the description I gave in this very last part of the talk um, is, uh, is similar to, but uh, distinct from what's known in the works of Oswald and Saba. So it gives a theory that works uniformly for essentially all the algebras. So that's all I wanted to tell you. Thank you. Oh, hi. So, yeah, so thank you. Let me just end this uh, session. Uh, I thank the speaker for the very interesting talk. And I also wish to uh, thank the audience for attending this talk.